good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are, hope you're having a good one. Uh, today we are tying, uh, I haven't done a dry fly for a wee while on the channel, so I figured we'd do one. Uh, small sizes, this is a really handy caddis pattern. Uh, this is a 12, I'm actually just going to use this as kind of a general uh, terrestrial kind of deal. Um, it looks like it's got a great little buggy sort of uh, silhouette to it. You know, I think I'm going to have some fun when the... Uh, local brown trout are looking up. Um, it's also a really cool example of how you can use dirty bug yarn in a few different ways. Uh, in this case it's in the caddis brown, uh, which you can see there and obviously through the body of it. Um, but I've brushed it out to make a tail or a shuck, depending what you want it to imitate. Uh, wrapped uh, through for the body, you know, which is sort of how you'd expect to use it and use it a lot in nymphs. And then underneath here, I've actually just pulled away a few fibres uh, from the yarn and used it like you would use a dubbing. Now on top of this, uh, hopefully you can just see it shining through there a little bit, is some um, crystal pearl from Semperfly, which is a Semper Flash range. Uh, we've got a brown saddle hackle for the hackle. And um, the other thing to consider when you're fishing it, you can actually cut it off away from the bottom, which is going to have it sit flatter. Uh, the hook is an Arex FW510, which is a curved dry fly hook. And then for thread, I am using Semperfly Nano in brown. And hopefully that will be enough to get us through to the end of the video, but we'll see. And I cross that bridge when we get to it. But I hope it's a handy pattern for you. I hope you enjoy the video and happy time. Let's get into it. Cheers. Alright, uh, we're using that FW510, the curved dry hook dry fly hook from Arex. Our thread is the brown nano uh, in 30 denier. And we're just going to start off our base layer of thread. Uh, the thing I like about this hook, uh, one you get that different profile as well than just a straight hook. Um, this also has quite a nice uh, open uh, hook gate to it. Uh, which I think can be quite handy. Now, this one we aren't going to go all the way around and into it, which of course you could. Um, uses quite a handy clink hammer hook as well, or uh, if you're tying patterns that sit below the surface a fair bit more. Um, this one I like that it's probably going to dip down just a little bit into the film. Uh, but I more like it for that uh, wide uh, hook gate. So we're just going to tie in further, just past the barb. And you're just starting to go around it into the uh, bend of the hook. And then we'll just get rid of our tag end here. And from there we're going to move on to that uh, shuck or tail. Right. Uh, dirty bug yarn, a uh, really cool material from Semperfly, great for building bodies on nymphs, emerges, dry flies. Um, probably find an application for it on streamers as well to be fair. Uh, range of colours, uh, this is just a few. We've got a uh, mottled olive there, a golden olive and a dirty dark olive. Um, you can see like really cool uh, mottling to it. Uh, for this one though, we're using the Caddis Brown, which is brown and with a few sort of orangey and green tints through it. Um, to get the look of that shuck, uh, what I've done is pulled off a strand of it, a few inches. You need to put it on your desk, but I'll try to show it best as I can here. Um, I've just got this Stonfo tool here, which is Velcro and a comb at one end, real handy. And I'll just take that Velcro end and I will just brush and brush and brush and brush that until all the fibres have uh, come unwound. You've got a frayed, I think frayed is the word, a uh, little end uh, to it there. At which point uh, we will tie it in. And we just want to get a couple wraps there. And it's up to you whether you want a you know, really long sort of uh, chuck or a tail on it. Um, do you know how I find as I roll my fingers through it and uh, pull some of the fibres out? Um, but we're just going to do I think about half of the uh, total body of the fly. I'm just going to hang out the back there. Um, if you wanted to, you could tease it out so it's a bit more scraggly, but uh, we'll crack on as is. And I don't want to move up too far uh, into the body, but we just want to secure that down nice and tight. 
and then we'll move on to uh, wrapping that body and we'll go through a couple or another cool thing uh, with the yarn. Alright as you can probably kind of see there uh, it is two strands all uh, wrapped together and what you can actually do with this is you pull it apart here and get my fingers out of the way you can see it coming apart and this is quite cool and that now you have a little bit more uh, control over the thickness whether you want to do a nice big fat thick body or if you want to do something thinner uh, in this case for demonstration purposes and what I've done on the, the first fly you saw there in the intro uh, I've gone with a thinner body um, I think when cicadas really start turning up I'm going to quite enjoy using it as a thicker body as well and uh, just building up that uh, bulk or mass on it and I'm going to put the body end up tying it in at about the halfway point but we're just going to wrap it around um, one thing I haven't done with this one is uh, ribbing you could um, I'm not really worrying about it um, you just want to try and so I'm lost focus just a little bit here so if you bear with me I'll just try to pull that back there we go and you just want to try to keep that tapered body as much as you can and just build it up until you get to that uh, tie-in point uh, it's up to you, you can uh, keep it nice and straggly like uh, I hope you can see little bits uh, flying off there everywhere or you could trim that back down um, I'm a big fan of uh, scraggly uh, looking flies uh, so I'll leave it as is and you can kind of see how the, the body has been formed right next up we've got the crystal pearl which is from the uh, Semper Flash range from Semper Fly it's just that image of a, a wing catching the sunlight underneath it um, just a little bit of uh, something to catch the eye really we're going to tie that in on top and I want it to be back to about where the uh, shuck uh, starts just tie that in and just bring it in back over top of the body there we'll just get rid of the tag ends and I do three strands of this Fold it in half, which makes six going back here. And you should have a fair bit left, so I can do a couple of them. Alright, next up we're doing that uh, deer hair wing. Let's go deer hair. Um, this one has quite a lot of uh, under fur on it, so just take your time to uh, get out as much as you can. I just use a, a comb, you can see it all come out there. Um, as far as uh, quantity goes, you don't need a lot, uh, it floats really well. Um, it's a hollow uh, hollow here uh, filled with air um, which makes it real handy um, lengthwise I do it about the same as that uh, crystal flash in quantity it's about um, a third to half uh, the diameter of say a pencil uh, just as a reference and something we can all use to compare to um, hopefully this will stay in focus and I apologise if it doesn't but you've got to use a bit of a pinch wrap here and this will stop the wing from flaring too much and I have forgotten sorry we've lost a bit of it there but the other point that I wanted to make is also with here when you're tying it in I quite like to uh, add just a bit of wax to my thread it helps it grip and it won't slide around on you uh, as much hopefully at all um, again we've just got that sort of out just past the uh, the flash with the pinch wrap and it's probably going to be almost in line with the tip of the tail and just do two very loose wraps and when you come back up 
rather than tightening it on the down downward pull up and pinch tight with your other hand uh, that's not in the bobbin the one that's holding the wing and then we're just going to secure that down you know, over top uh, you can see it's sitting there uh, nicely and from there we're just going to build back and just get it secured in nice and tight don't want it going anywhere and then cool. just bit by bit I'll tie it down in steps is probably the only word I can think of uh, to explain this you're just pulling back a little pinch of uh, fibre or here each time until you get down to the uh, bottom there and then pull it all up it should be all nice and secured nice and tight and then cut it on an angle as best as you can trying to avoid uh, cutting the actual wing itself it can be a bit uh, finicky but just uh, trim away so it might look a little bit minky as I get my face right down and have a close look but we'll get it as best as we can and from there we'll just uh, just build it up a bit because we're going to be putting our hackle and dubbing down uh, over this we're almost there I just like to have just a bit more cool. and we'll just secure that all down nice and tight uh, at this point uh, anything that's sticking out uh, over the top which you can kind of see there a little bit, we'll just trim away. So just get in there with your scissors, try not to cut the wing. And if you can get a little fine arrow point one, you can really uh, get down and get the longer bits out of the way. Uh, but we'll get on to tying in the hackle, and that's using the dirty bug yarn as dubbing. Right, we're going to tie that hackle in. Uh, so this one I use a brown. Um, real easy to tell which side. One side's dark brown and the concave side is actually almost a yellowy colour very very tan faded brown um, because we've got the deer here to help float it this will help float too but it's more to give that impression of some legs on the water as well um, so I actually strip away you can see it there what is the bottom uh, half of the hackle so usually I'll hold it towards me so yellow side away or tan side away and just pull away those bottom fibres. Then with the lighter or yellow or tan side, whatever you want to call it, facing towards you, or the dull side, uh, depending on the colour, um, I just tie that in uh, facing me. This is going to get a, a really nice looking hackle as well. I mean, you don't have to strip the hackle down either. You know, if you want to just have a nice big bushy hackle, go for it and you know you could use other colors too whether you use Cree or uh, Grizzly go for it get rid of that tag same with the colors on the body uh, whatever uh, you feel like you need just have at it and we'll get into that dubbing now to get the dubbing uh, all I am going to do I've got some of our uh, leftover yarn and just pinch it and pull it's nice and hard and it'll uh, come away and just get our uh, thread back up to the uh, base of that wing and we're just going to dub it on exactly the same way we would any other dubbing just make a nice little noodle we might do that a couple times but just gives us a nice underbody uh, on that uh, underneath where that hackle is going to go which I always find gives a nicer hackle too and we'll just keep going at it. Like I've said in other uh, videos, uh, less is more, and it's just easier to control. And we'll just bring that down to the eye. Alrighty, we'll go on to wrapping that hackle. Alright, hackle, and we're just doing it away from me. And we're just going to wrap that around here. Ideally, I want it to be around about the same as the hook gap. And just this one I do just slightly more than touching turns, just a little gap 
uh, in between each wrap and that dubbing underneath just helps it nestle in um, you could in theory as well do a different colour, you don't have to do the same colour as you've done the body um, there's a wide range of uh, colours in that um, dirty bug yarn and once you get to the eye we'll just uh, secure that in and once we've got that in I like to do one or two wraps in front of it too just to really bind down on those uh, on those wraps let's get rid of that all right and as always just to finish it off we are going to do our whip finish um, if you want you can put a bit of uh, head cement in there or uh, glue whatever you like to use I usually just do a few wraps um, they stay pretty nice and secure and just cut away and probably got enough to do a couple more Right, there we have it, our caddis uh, dry fly, a little terrestrial kind of pattern. Again, smaller sizes, uh, especially uh, here in New Zealand, uh, more of a, a caddis, I think, but and it's got enough of a buggy profile in those bigger uh, sizes. I think it's going to be taken as a general uh, kind of terrestrial thing as well. And you can have a play around the colours and the length of the wing and uh, tail. You could even get rid of the tail or shuck if you wanted. Um, again, majority of it's tied in that dirty bug yarn. In this case in the caddis brown uh, but there's that whole range of colors uh, and you can find them on the semperfly website or uh, whoever deals it uh, in your area uh, hook that arex uh, 510 in a size 12 um, that nice curved hook um, you can do it in a, a straight hook as well if you wanted to um, brown uh, saddle hackle deer hair crystal uh, crystal pearl uh, from semperfly and brown nano silk and again we've brushed it out for the shuck just wrapped the yarn for the body and then used it as a dubbing for the uh, underneath the hackle it's a really cool material and quite versatile uh, but i hope it's been a handy uh, video i hope the the pattern works well for you uh, happy tying cheers see you next time